Hey everybody, I'm Eric Fusilier with the Arkansas Native Plant Society and we're going to take a tour today of some of the native plant communities you can find in the Devil's Eyebrow Natural Area. So come along and let's see what we can find. The name for the natural area comes from its rugged terrain. Legend has it, when they were searching for a route to put the railroad, they were told that they'd have an easier time putting it on the Devil's Eyebrow than taking it through here. Devil's Eyebrow supports one of the highest concentrations of rare plant species in Arkansas, with several species typically found far to the north, and others that are restricted in distribution and considered globally rare. One of the native plant communities you'll find on the hilltops and ridges here in the Devil's Eyebrow Natural Area are the upland forests consisting of oaks, hickories, and eastern red cedars. But it's underneath these tall, towering trees on the forest floor where you'll find many of the natural area's hidden treasures. For instance, a perennial rush that is able to withstand considerable trampling and compacted soil, path rush can be found along many of the trails here in the Ozarks. Despite its name, blue red grass is not actually a grass at all, it's an iris. Common in prairies, savannas, rocky open woods, and glades, this small, clump-forming plant has pointed, upright, grass-like leaves. The flower stems are typically longer than the leaves and produce several light to dark blue flowers, each with a yellow center on each stalk. These flowers contain three sepals and three petals that all look like petals. The tips of the sepals and petals can vary from rounded with a bristled tip, to notched, to shallowly toothed. Common in prairies, savannas, rocky woodlands, and dolomite glades, Hori Pacoon grows to between 6 and 18 inches tall and has dense hairs that give the plant a gray-green color. The leaves are alternate, lack stalks, and grow to about 2.5 inches long and are less than a half inch wide. The orange flowers of Hori Pacoon are in a flattened cluster at the top of the plant. Common on acidic soils derived from chert, sandstone, or igneous rock, and on dry or rocky open wooded slopes and ridges, and sometimes in prairies and glades, pussy toes can grow up to 15 inches high and spread by underground runners to form large colonies. The stems are covered with a dense mat of woolly hairs. Basil leaves are oval and woolly underneath and are eaten by many species of wildlife, including bobwhite quail, cottontail rabbits, and white-tailed deer. This plant gets its common name from its woolly flower heads, which are said to resemble a cat's paw. Violet wood sorrel is a perennial plant with leaves that resemble a shamrock. The leaves are grayish green but may turn purplish in response to cold weather or strong sunlight. The flowers have five lavender or pale purple petals. Fire pink is an herbaceous species of plant that stands between one half to two feet tall. At the tip of each stem, three to ten flowers can be found, each having five spreading red petals that are notched at their tips. Downy Phlox is an herbaceous perennial plant with a light green to purplish green stem that is covered with spreading white hairs. The opposite leaves are sparsely to moderately distributed along the stem. The leaves are linear to linear lanceolate, sessile, and mostly hairless, except along their margins in the lower side of their central veins. The flowers may be white, pink, or lavender. The leaves of bird's foot violet are deeply divided into three to five palmate lobes, while each lobe may be further divided into two to three smaller lobes. 
The flower petals are pale blue violet to dark purple violet. Down here in the valleys, you can find another native plant community type along the banks of the stream, such as the one behind me. The diversity of the plant species found along the banks of the streams here in the natural area make these some of my favorite plant communities to visit. Jewelweed is a summer annual that becomes two to five feet tall. The round stems are glabrous and succulent, pale green to pale reddish green, and somewhat translucent. The alternate leaves are ovate, thin textured, and hairless. Hold a leaf under water and rock it side to side slowly to see why they call it jewelweed. A hydrophobic substance on the surface of the leaf creates a shiny, silvery shimmer that's fun for kids of all ages. Wild hydrangeas are a shrub that stand between 3 to 8 feet tall. At the end of each cane of the wild hydrangea you can find a panicle of flowers. In the center of each panicle are numerous fertile flowers that are very small in size, while around the outer margin of the panicle there are a few sterile flowers that are larger in size. In early May, you can see the narrow, rounded leaves of the Widow's Cross crowded along its stem. Within a few weeks, the flowers, densely packed along three to five horizontal branches at the top of the stem, will bloom, each with five narrow white to pink petals and five red-tipped stamens. Northern Spicebush is a woody shrub that grows between five to fifteen feet tall. The bark is brown, shiny, and sparsely covered with small white lenticels. The leaves are alternate, medium green on the upper surface and pale green on the lower surface and are produced along new branchlets. The yellow flowers occur in small clusters along the branchlets before the leaves develop. Common in mesic woods, wild geraniums have hairy stems that are sometimes branched and can grow up to a foot and a half tall. The flowers grow in clusters at the top of the stems, each one having five rose to lavender colored petals with fine veins.
Thank you.